Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiokwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinix. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Good morning. It's good to have you back. <laughs> I hope you had a good time in that yeah, hush, that very, very hush, <laughs> freezing weather in Davos. Good, good that's be, what you said. Good to be that. back to this friendly yeah. weather. Uh, in fact, we don't, you were we don't know what we have here. You, you were freezing. <laughs> That was such a beautiful moment. Thank you. Well done. Congratulations. You Thank killed you. it. You did very well. I thoroughly enjoyed the vice president's interview. Well done. Kudos, Dr. Abati, our legendary Dr. Abati. Legendary. Ayo, how are you this I'm morning? Good this morning. I saw you dancing yeah. over the weekend. Yeah. You didn't call me. And we said we, we said we were going yeah. to. Next time. You owe me one. Ne I, would, I do. Rufi, okay. how now? Very well. Show up, I hope you're doing all right. Good, good, good. It's not that beautiful video. We will uh, highlight it uh, over we'll the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, on Friday, hopefully, before the weekend. Well, let's begin what's trending by commending troops of the Nigerian army after a successful mission of retrieving victims kidnapped in the Buari area of the FCT from the Kajuri Forest in Kaduna State. The operation, which took place on January 20th, was reported to have been carried out by the Army's 197 Special Forces Battalion. A viral video showed the dramatic moment the victims, including a customs officer, were freed. Let's take a look. Okay. Well, congratulations to the Nigerian army. I call it a successful mission because there were reports that, you know, there were no casualties. They all came out unharmed. But you saw that report from the Nigerian police saying that it was in, you know, in collaboration with the Nigerian army. But, um, you know, users on social media have asked, was it a, really a rescue mission? Was it a retrieval? I mean, those questions are being posed. But let me take this tweet from... Zagazola, who is a security analyst, counterinsurgency expert in Lake Chad, West Africa. Well, he wrote, the misleading police report, contrarily, a statement issued by the FCT Police Command suggested that their anti-kidnapping squad in collaboration with the Nigerian army was responsible for the rescue operation. The police narrative highlighted a joint effort that culminated in the liberation of the victims from the Kajuri Forest in Kaduna State at approximately 11.30 p.m. on the same date. The police commissioner, CP Haruna G. Garba, also lauded the role of the new special intervention squad and reaffirmed the force's commitment to maintaining security within the federal capital territory. Upon review, Zagazola Makama has determined that the police statement does not align with the verified actions taken by the army, apart from the fact that the army handed over the rescued abductees to the police for further reuniting them with their respective families. There was no time the military had jointly executed the operation with the police. I mean, Dr. Abate, I'd love your comment on this. I mean, we've always called for some sort of synergy between our security forces. Okay. The basic point is that nobody should be abducted yeah. or, if you like, kidnapped in any part of Nigeria, whether a female or a male, a child or an adult, because the whole purpose of government is to make this environment secure and to ensure our welfare and to defend our right to life and our right to, the dig to dignity. Where that is violated, it's an indication of the state feeling in its responsibility. That's the first basic point. The second basic point is that, look, when the uh, security agencies do their work, as they seem to have done in this case, rescuing persons who have been kidnapped, well, we, don't, we shouldn't even go overboard in prison them because nobody should be kidnapped in the first place. As to the point about uh, collaboration, well, I don't see any argument about, you know, rivalry. The police did it. Mm. Uh, the uh, military did it. Uh, oh, the two of them collaborated together. Uh, the uh, soldiers uh, rescued the people and handed over uh, to the police. Well, the police has the primary responsibility for protecting lives and property. 
where there are emergencies and they are overwhelmed, the Constitution provides that the military can be called in. And we often say that, except it's in an extraordinary situation, such as we have on our hands, you know, the uh, police should be allowed to do its work, should be empowered to do it. And the military should not be turned into a police, uh, an arm of the police. But collaboration, there, there's no problem with that. We've always asked for that in terms of sharing of intelligence. And every military chief, even the police chief, has always said on his own part that securing this space is a collective responsibility, that even journalists have a role to play. Uh, ordinary members of communities also have a role to play by providing information. Why the people are expected to play a role too? The security agencies must first of all do their work. And as far as we are concerned as citizens, I don't think we need to worry much, so much about whether uh, it was the police uh, that uh, killed the rat, uh, it was the uh, soldiers. Uh, you know, uh, soldiers uh, found the, the location of the rat. What we want is a country that is secure, mm -hmm. a country that is peaceful, and a country that newspapers like uh, economists will not be writing about and say the biggest issue in Nigeria today is uh, kidnappers on the prowl. That's Perfect. not good for the image of Absolutely the country, not. and that is not good for the reputation of the administration. Absolutely. I have the comments online and also, uh, you know, from that uh analyst, a security expert, one of the soldiers was saying, I mean, this statement demoralizes us, our morale. I mean, we went out there, we risked our life, and now the police is taking the credit. But you know, Dr. Abati has made some valid points Very here. Nice. Quick point from you before I um, All right, go so, to our um, next story. I, I apologize to their morale, yes. and um, we feel sorry about their morale, but the truth is that, as has been said, this is the duty of our security agencies. We praise them when they've done great work, as we've seen here. Yes. I think it's quite, quite important because they, they pay the ultimate price Price, you know, or, um, sometimes when it comes to, um, you know, security. However, it must be said as well that it took them over almost a month, it took them about two to three weeks to rescue these girls. It took them a while. And then what we should be hearing about is just the efforts of Nigeria to secure mm -hmm. its people, not in fighting between. I think it makes, it, it almost uh, waters down the, the importance and the import of what we're doing here in terms of securing lives and property. The... Military, the army or the police force is not a competition, is not an Instagram page. They are not influencers to see, okay, who has the highest notch in terms of the best, um, you know, rescue, redeem rescue. It's the fact that they are securing Nigeria and people are proud that you brought the people home. Absolutely. Let them fight in and let them work together and let us see less of these incidents and more gathering of intelligence. Then we can praise them properly for what they've done. I think uh, we, should, uh, we uh, should, it's not about them. Let it not be about, okay, we, it's our own. It's our victory. We, you want to play heroics on yeah. the lives of Nigerians. No, that's what I don't agree with. Right. I'm very sad. And is a reflection of the fact that we have interagency rivalry. But why is the army and the police as rivalry when there are other conflicting parts of the story that some people claim that ransom was paid mm -hmm. and they said it was after a call they made that go and pick up these people from this area. That was when they were going on the road and they saw the military and they said, please follow us there to be able to safeguard us. So, of what nature? I mean, it's a reflection of the joke Nigeria has become. In over one week, the same boat agencies did not do anything to bring them back. We didn't see reconnaissance, we didn't see action. All we saw was the launch of SIS, gesticulation and conferences here and there. They didn't bring the kidnapped people back. We have a hearing story of people that went to pay ransom. After paying ransom, they were put at the location and just said, go and collect them. The mm -hmm. next thing, you are issuing statements. Issuing the point, we brought them back. This morning, I would like our strong military force not to be deterred. I like our strong police force officers that are doing the hard work not to be deterred. And I pay tribute to those police officers that lost their life, that was the first to react in all of this. And I pay tribute to the families that were lost. God. Well, all right. We'll take another story. Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoinka has yet again lamented the sorry state of social media in Nigeria, which he says has been dragged down to the lowest common denominator and taken over by people he described as barbarians. Shoinka said that in other climes, social media is still valid as means of interactions because of the intellectual content and reasoned engagements being deployed by users, but noted that here in Nigeria, 
The reverse is the case, as those who dragged it down have swapped the intellectual quotient aspect of it. Shoin Ka spoke at the 48th President's Party and his investiture as an honorary member of Abe Okuta Club in Ogun State, eliciting reactions. Let me take this one from uh, Andrew, who wrote, Social media is debunking all political propaganda and the narrative of our so-called elders. We find the truth faster than the lies these days. So I understand the frustration. And if barbarism is what it takes to save Nigeria and do that which they failed to do, so be it. Well, uh, um, Dr. Abati, I guess over to you, because um, I believe uh, back in, uh, uh, I mean, last year in Egypt, I did speak with Professor Wale Shoinka, and he made the same point. I mean, he's always been a strong advocate for the correct use of language, but the word barbarian triggered a lot of social media users. Your point? Well, barbarians originally referred to those people who were not part of the Greek or Romanic uh, civilization. But in contemporary usage, when a person is called a barbarian, it means that the person is uncivilized, yeah. inferior, violent. And what uh, Professor Shoinka is saying again is that you'll find a lot of uncultured persons, uncivilized persons, in decent conduct in the use of the social media. I recall the uh, conversation you had with him mm -hmm. uh, when you interviewed him. He wasn't calling, and this time again, he's not calling for a ban of no. the social media. Right. He has not said that the social media is negative. It's important to put that in context so that it's not misunderstood. But he's saying that a certain tribe has taken over social media of uncultured, unintelligent, uneducated people who use something that could be a positive force for negative purposes. That is his argument. And he believes uh, this time around saying that the problem is that the level of most of the people on social media, their intelligence uh, quotient is abysmally low. But how do we correct that? The solution that he gives is raising the intellectual content of social media so that it can be more useful. Through education, education was the word he used the other time. Yes. This time around, he's using intelligence quotient. He's more or less saying the same thing. How do you raise the level? And he cited the example of what happened during the election when he said people were using the social media to promote ethnophobia, mm -hmm. the opposite of which, according to him, is ethnophilia. You know, and then having that conflict, you know, in terms of level of awareness on social media becoming a battleground. And he has been very consistent in this regard. And the question is, how do we ensure that something that is positive, you know, uh, that is a strong force in today's uh, uh, world is used in a positive manner? And in that regard, the World Bank just issued uh, a brief in which they were saying that, in fact, the expansion in terms of the use of social media in Nigeria and Tanzania has been responsible for growth, for innovation. So that positive side is there. But where the danger is, is that a lot of people use it to abuse people that they can never abuse face to face, to, you know, insult people, something they, they would never do, to <coughs> misrepresent themselves. But you, you don't have the positive side of it. Mm -hmm. There are people who use it for business. Yes. Uh, particularly on Instagram. Mm -hmm. There are people who use it for entertainment on TikTok. So finding the positive value right. is where the challenge lies. Yeah. And that's what I think Professor Shoyinka is drawing attention to. You missed out the point. There are people that are influencers as well, <coughs> special influencers. Which like you, content <laughs> creators. Content creators. Like, uh, <laughs> no, no, the, the influencers. Like <laughs> brings me to my next story in another development. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu over the weekend congratulated social media influencer and author Reno Omokuri, who is a member of the People's Democratic Party and a former special assistant on digital media to ex-president Goodluck Jonathan as he marked his 50th birthday. The president, in a statement issued on Sunday by his media advisor, Ajuri Ngelali, commended Omokuri for his dutifulness in providing constructive opinions on national issues regardless of his political disposition. Reno posted the congratulatory message from the president on his ex account eliciting reactions. I, Rufai, I see you raising your hand. You want to say, you want to jump so, in so on, on both stories quickly. And... So, so a couple of things. At first, uh, happy birthday, Reno. I wish you the very best. 50 years is a milestone in any man's life. And uh, 
Wish you many more years and uh, wish you God's grace in your life. Uh, moving on, as regards what President Wale Shenga said, I disagree with most of the things he said. Number one, anywhere in the world, there is no clear on intellectual base in social media. Social media was set up for, by people to be an alternative source of media. And what becomes the editorial benchmark of social media is algorithm. And let's get that clear because we get too emotional about things like that. I do not subscribe to people that say all sorts of things that are wrong against other people or defame people on social media. But the truth has to be said. The reason why people put social media there, the founders, is to be able to hear the voice of those you will normally not hear in society. Mm. So it's not an intellectual base. If Professor Wolshenka is saying it's an intellectual conversation on social media, social media is largely for wahoolens and all sorts of, you can call it uncultural thought and process, but it's also a thought process. So this idea of elitism on social media does not cut it. It is mostly a renegade form of media. And I'm sure Professor Wolesh Inka remembers strongly during the struggle against Sonia Abacha. There was a Kudirat radio too that said a lot of things that the government too will say is derogatory for them. But that was the quest and that was the championing of the cause they needed to do then right. after the June 12 elections. Right. So let's not forget that. And let's get that out. Because I keep hearing this social media. Me that I'm talking, have I been abused many times on social media? You've yes. been trolled a lot. And, and what do you feel? How do you feel about those that troll you? See, uh, wh what do you consider yes, them as? A lot of the reputational damage and all of yes. that is hurtful. Right. But for the fact, the things you can deal with, you deal with. The ones you cannot deal with, you cannot deal with. So them. you just ignore them. So you just ignore them yeah. largely. Because it's not a reflection of who you are. Yeah. And I know that. But, but there needs to media, be some sort of control, and there needs so, to be so some sort of control, mannerism. And I guess that's what he's Hang on a minute. The control will come from yeah. the companies that own the social media and their algorithms, mm. but which they are not ready to do because of the revenue they are making from your participation on the platform. Well, all right. So let us, so if Professor Washington is going to direct this, he has to also direct it to the company that makes this. And in the end, the troll, the abuse, the fight, the, eth the eth ethno-religious banter on social media. Mm -hmm. It's a reflection of our society. That's what our society has but become. But it, it shouldn't be accepted. So it should, it should be not condemned. be accepted should and be it should condemned. be condemned Absolutely. totally. Let's That's what on. we are saying. Well, all right. In another development, the chairman of the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms, Taiwo Oyedele, has said that federal government should begin the execution of tax reforms by March 2024, or speaking during a live television interview, Oyedele said his team is planning to involve all stakeholders in implementation, including touts, popularly called area boys, eliciting reactions. Let's take a look before we take some reactions. We're also thinking about how do you bring all stakeholders on board? Uh, because at the end of the day, if you stop the livelihood of anyone, whether they are earning it legitimately or not, you can create crises that will be difficult to manage. So, but one, once you bring everybody in, maybe we need to train those area boys and touts, uh, give them uniform, and then they'll be the ones to ask you to show the evidence on your phone, right? And then they get paid a decent salary. Um, and if you give them the skills, some of them will on their own move on from that job to something else. Right? So our strategy is let's think about what's best for our country and get all stakeholders to align. We do think that all the stakeholders, including the governors, want the best for their country. And we just need to make them see that big picture and then come along with us. So that's the uh, plan that we have. Well, all right, Ayo, you know that this will cause a lot of reactions. Area boys becoming tax collectors. Let's take Michael's tweet. He wrote, what about teaming unemployed graduates? Are they not capable to be trained as tax officers? The use of area boys as tax officers is to intimidate the masses into submission through the use of force. Is this the new Nigeria we are building under uh, Bola Tinbu? Must you be an area boy before you can get employed in the system? This Twitter user, there's been some response to that as well. Let me take Odogu's uh, tweet who wrote, uh, area boys to become tax officers. Tinubu's Lagos template is now being implemented in full scale. MC Oluomo may be the next chief collection officer and Alpha Beta awarded the contract. 
It's disappointing to hear this from Taiwo Oyedele, someone from the private sector. Is this how he grew ranks at PwC? What happened to recruiting from the innumerable Nigerian graduate youth roaming the streets jobless? The same area boys will be empowered across Nigeria and will be used for rigging and maiming during election. This should be resisted and should not see the light of the day. I mean, he, Odogu made some points, but also, you know, referring to the template of Lagos, he was also the rhetoric on social media. Yeah. Over to you. All right, I was just going to mention very quickly, because uh, this social media, talk yes. about Reno Omokwe at 50 very quickly. Today is his 50th birthday. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you spoke about his, I mean, the story is taken side by side yeah. with that of Wally. Well, Professor Olinshik sure are yes. talking about you know people who are who cause a nuisance on social media. The truth is that last year, um, when no more there was about over 130,000 petition against his account mm -hmm. for um, inciting ethnic division. Right. And when you get a presidential commendation, especially on birthdays, things like birthdays, it seems as if the handler of the president's account has decided to wish every single Nigerian, irrespective of their contribution to the nation. In the past, when you get a presidential nod on your birthday it means that you've contributed significantly. I, I think we need to watch the people that yes. we promote, the people that we celebrate, especially coming from the office of the president. I can understand the narrative of a political, in quote, rival, even though we don't even know where he sits on, because today he's supporting PDP, tomorrow it's APC. But if you read Renault Omokri's tweet, I wish him all the best. It's a great thing that he's celebrating 50. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's one to be celebrated. He has some strong opinions and everyone's entitled to it, but he has also made some very inciting yes. comments especially during the elections. Now to the tax Please collectors, I'll just that. say one line on that. It's, well, well, we don't, the, the danger of this, I can see um, his point, but there's a danger of rewarding criminality yes. in, 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 in Nigeria. So it almost seems an admittance of failure to mm -hmm. contain the menace yes. of touts. And so the best thing to do is just to yes. reward them with positions. Yes, I know. He made some points. I know Dr. Bati will address it, but let us uh, take our final story. Following up on the suspension of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Dr. Beta Edu, over the weekend, a group of women organized a rally calling on President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to reinstate the minister. The women held placards with various inscriptions, including Give Beta Edu a Second Chance, Bring Back Beta Edu, Market Women Need Beta Edu. Let's take a look. Back our better. Dr. Bati, she was a Malabrest. How do you feel as a great Malabite? <laughs> just, I'm well, just pulling uh, your legs. This is Nigeria. Because I'm pulling your legs. Uh, as Pliny the Elder mm -hmm. said, something new always comes Absolutely, out of Africa. Yes. And in Nigeria, something new, mm -hmm. you know, comes up every day. But this is a democracy. Yes. You know, people will express their views and it's very easy. You can rent a crowd. Absolutely. Uh, that's very easy. And then some of the placards they are carrying, some of them are saying refugees are asking for better. There's nobody there looking like a refugee. All these uh, heavily uh, made up uh, women, you know, all looking rotund and uh, fresh and uh, beautiful. They don't look like refugees. Yes. And it's not as if they are protesting on the street. This is in, a air conditioned, in an air conditioned uh, uh, place. But freedom of expression yes. is guaranteed by the Nigerian constitution and people have the right to express their views and they cannot be taken to task no. if they have, you know, put themselves, uh, you know, in that position. As for Taiwo Yedili, mm -hmm. he has more than enough to worry about. Uh, can he just leave area boys alone? Uh, if, if, will he stop with uh, area boys or very soon he will carry uh, Omonile I mean, and join? This yeah. was how under Buhari, they said they were rehabilitating this uh, terrorists. Is unacceptable. What do we get from it? Yes. He has enough job. His Absolutely. job is tax reform yes. and uh, fiscal policy reform. And he says execution will start in March. Mm -hmm. He also needs to get the National Assembly mm -hmm. to sign off on the relevant bill. Correct. Those are more important things. I mean, he says the, his committee is talking to governors and local government chairmen mm -hmm. to you know, eliminate nuisance 
uh, taxes, multiple taxation. Those are more important Absolutely. things to talk about. You go on television, you are talking about area boys. If you take their about, livelihood, about how taxation. can a live, area boys be a livelihood? It says collective responsibility. I, mean, I don't know how that the works. The collective responsibility mm -hmm. will be about getting more people into that tax net. Yes. And making sure that people discharge their civic responsibility. Well all these, uh, you know, <laughs> brainless things about area boys yes. are no money left. Well, all no, right. You should Stay well, away right. from that. Dr. Bati is back. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank you all for your great analysis as always on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.